Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, welcome to Rad Kutarot, this is Rad and in this whole video we're going to check or I'm going to check on Gemini and how their week is going to be uh, the October 26th to November 1st, 2020. And in case you are interested in a personal reading, uh, you can check out the description down below and there you're going to find a link to my website uh, where on the very front page you're going to find full list of my services and uh, as well their pricing. Also, um, if you want to get into tarot, you want to start reading tarot, I'm also offering a tarot classes and you can find them under the tarot classes section in the website as well. So with that being said, uh, let's move to the spread. We do have an eight card spread here divided in two layers. Now the first layer, which is the upper layer of the spread is going to describe your emotional and romantic life throughout the week so in term uh, so in other words focus on your uh, relationship and love the downer layer of the reading of the reading or of the spread focuses on your a uh, professional manifestation which speaks about your job your career you know your um, your finances if you will and so on and so forth so just to make myself easier or to make the things easier to myself, I'm going to turn one layer, then I'm going to interpret that layer and then I'm going to move to the next layer so I don't get myself distracted with all of those cards and messages and so on and so forth. So moving to the Romans, first we have the Two of Swords first, followed by the Page of a Swords. Afterwards, that is to be uh, the Chariot card and the last one. Whoa, we have the Ace of a Wands. Very interesting. So you are going to have a person whispering in your ears, trying to sway you in some kind of a decision that you are to make. But the more that person tries to sway you into that decision, the more ridiculous the decision is going to sound. <laughs> I mean, sounds familiar, right? And uh, it's very important that throughout the week, especially as having the Two of Swords here into the first position, which is the prime, not to make any major moves or major decision throughout the duration of the week. That is because, at, especially at the start of it, uh, how can I say, the right decision, it's just anybody's guess. I mean, uh, imagine you are wondering whom you should invest your time in, right? Which person, since you are having an opportunity to date two people and you do have a friend who is whispering in your ear, you have to take number one instead of number two or vice versa. And the more they're doing it, you know, the more you realize that you have to make that decision yourself, not being swayed by somebody that likes one or the other what is important who do who do you like and for that reason you won't be able to decide for yourself i know that it sounds contradictive but uh, it, 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 that kind of a it's that kind of a uh, situation where the stubbornness is actually a virtue that just because you are swayed to make a choice you are stubborn and you're saying no i'm not going to unless i'm a hundred percent certain that you know i'm gonna end up a beneficiary here and you are gonna do the right thing because the, the two of swords says that the longer you wait the right choice the right choice will become more and more obvious so in terms of Romans, how I can imagine this will happen is that, say, two people are trying to catch up your attention and they both are equally fit to be in a relationship with you and you don't want to give the, um, the prevailing factor to neither of them and suddenly or you know, slowly progressingly, one of them it is just, you know, losing interest Then the obvious choice, the right choice becomes obvious that you are going to go by with the one that haven't lost its interest, right? So this is how the thing is going to play out for you. Uh, the chariot is also a very um, peculiar card falling here. For the chariot speaks that... Um, for you at least, the time pretty much has came, especially if you are single, to make your move 
uh, in order to make your move i mean to jump into relationship uh, and it pretty much gives you the start of the race that any time you make a relationship is going to be a good time for you to make a relationship so it's pretty much within your hands when to do it but another thing it is what the chariot points it is that you are just going to attract the tension because the chariot thrives uh, under the singular energy if i may express myself that way that your presence your uh, if you will previous achievements your your look your your acts as well or your behavior i'm sorry was i was about to say just attracts people around i mean people want to be with you and even more people want to be like you at least for the duration of uh, of this week and of course you can take a, a full advantage of it for the chariot points that at least if you do go throughout this week in terms of love, love and romance to have wish fulfillment, you definitely could achieve that. And by the end of the week here with the Ace of Wands, we do have where the, 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 the love life just opens for you and you can uh, definitely jump into quite gaining full enterprises which you have the luxury to choose which one you are going to go by with just one thing i want to say at the end it is that you have to be um open for new things for the future relationships you are to have or the future interactions that are going to be born based on the week itself they are going to be uh quite different from those you had thus far and that's why you need to have a tolerance uh, and uh, uh how can I say affinity to adapt and to uh, and to learn? So you need to uh, the, these people that you may involve yourself with. They need to spark a interest rather than uh, a sense of security, if that makes sense. So let's move to the uh, professional manifestation, and the first card of it is going to be the Empress, followed by the Page of a Pentacles. Moving next, we do have the Eight of a Wands, and the last one is going to be the Six of Pentacles. Um, I hate to say it, but I have not much to say about your, um, how can I say, professional manifestation, because according to those cards, things are going to be just fine. This is what the card says, okay? Whatever you are doing, you are going to keep up doing it. Now, if you are jobless, however, with those cards, uh, then the, the, the energy shifts because you have nothing to do and you will have to do something throughout the week because the week shows a... Uh, it's not like action, but it does shows um, movement or rather like a flow. And with the uh, eight of a wands... Uh, this is a completely, uh, how can I say, not optional but conditional a, a circumstances. It does point that should you seek for an uh, for an opportunities, you are to find an opportunities. Okay, the job is not going to find you. You have to find your job. And with the Eight of Wands, I don't like that card to be honest because the card, yeah, this card, yeah, it gives you an opportunities, but also it's a quite of a big risk. Okay, because because it, it it's like a gambling card. You gamble with uh, with those uh, with those opportunities, and you lose one over the other to to find out that whatever you have chose may not be what you wanted. So it doesn't it gives you an opportunities, but it doesn't say that they are going to be gaining for opportunities. Okay, so that's why you have to be very careful what you are agreeing on. Aside from that. With the emperor sitting on its prime here into the um, first position of the of the professional manifestation, it points that should you be jobless, your skills are going to be highly valued and they are going to be highly appreciated and high on demand as well. Now, the problem, however, are going to be uh, other people that are competing for that um, for that spot that have more experience than you do. Uh, in more experience, I mean they have worked uh, more years than you have. That that will be the problem. And if the company seeks someone with a bigger um, work experience, quote in quote, because to me experience doesn't, um, uh, doesn't validate by how long you have worked somewhere, but how much you can. 
but for some company that's how, how much you have been in that field how much years you have been in that field is somewhat of a big factor to whom to uh, assign to the job nonetheless uh, should you seek restlessly here or yeah relentlessly let's say uh, you are going to find yourself an opportunity and by the end of the week we are seeing you uh, Gemini with the uh, six of pentacles where you are moving in a current and uh, should you find yourself a job even if uh, even if you're not fitting very well at the start you need a time to get the hang of it with the six of pentacles you are going to be granted that time so that card for those that are jobless shows that they're going to be given a, a margin at the, at the start of their job to uh to pretty much fit and, and get with the collective moving forward and for those that have not work it's just things are gonna go completely normal uh throughout this week the only problem that they are to have here is uh somewhat um people that are difficult to catch up with how the uh with the dynamic of the work and uh, you gemini will have to kind of like compensate for that uh, and at the end of the week, you are to reap whatever you have sowed. And uh, also at the end of the week with the Six of Pentacles, for those that are having a steady job, uh, at that point, they may be asked to cover up for someone. Or what I mean is to clean up a mess of somebody else. But you may not be thrilled to do, but nonetheless, you will have to because nobody else can. So that being said, this was your uh, weekly general tower reading, Gemini. Hopefully you do enjoy it and you do like it, guys. And uh, we may see each other next time. Until then, bye.